Welcome, this is the prep week. This is the Wednesday before the sale on the Saturday here at Manor Park Classics. And what I'm going to try and do for you now, attempt to do, is run you through every single lot that's going through on Saturday. There's a lot of lots, so bear with me. I'm going to cheat. I've got all of my notes here on this phone, so I'm going to try and walk you through, talk you through. See if there's anything you like. Don't forget, there's still time to pre-register so you can bid from afar. Even better, come down in person because we've got viewing days all the way up till Saturday. You can have a look at the cars, have a poke and a prod, see if there's anything that you want. And then of course, when you come and bid on Saturday, whether in person or from afar, you know exactly what you're bidding on. So we do encourage that, but let me give you a virtual tour. So this is a very cool place to start. This is here, a 1994 BMW 840ci. Why do you want one of these? They're incredibly good news. They've been up till this point, I think very underpriced. The 840 is perhaps the easier one to live with because it's the smaller engine. It's not the V12. It's got the lovely wheels that don't fall to bits like the 850 wheels. It's the best color, it's the German national racing color. This one has only done 96,000 miles. It's an auto, of course. And that one is, I don't know, booked at maybe 12 to 14 grand. So you could buy that car for not a lot of cash. What a lovely way to travel. This one, I love this one. Now, Mercedes have always been good news. The ones that I think will be incredibly good news going forward and are starting to make really quite decent money already are the sport lines. This is a 1993 190 2.6 Sportline. What that gives you is the lower suspension, the deeper seats, the body kit, the wheels, the roof. It's an incredible spec. We have had so many inquiries on this car, so do make sure you register to bid if you're interested. The condition is exceptional. As I say, 109,000 miles, which isn't a lot for a car of that age. I would very much like to own this motor car. I think it's just, to me, everything about Mercedes at their zenith, making the nicest cars, the best build quality. Let's be honest, it did slightly go downhill after this for a period. This is Top of the top. Now, let's go a bit more domestic. Who doesn't love a Cavalier? Because everyone's dad had a Cavalier, or you might have had a Cavalier as your first car. This is the SRI, so it's got a red top. It's done 88,000 miles. It's 1992, this car. And I have to say, it's pretty beautiful. It's not Concours, but it's blessed tidy. It really is very, very clean indeed. I think, you know, a couple of days on this, you could spend a very small amount of time just tidying up this shut here, doing a little bit of engine bay detailing it, and you would have a Concours car. That isn't going to be much. Let's have a look. Let's see what the estimate is on that one. The estimate on that one is three to five grand. Just not a lot of money for a great car, is it? The next one here, everybody knows these are good news. This is a 1989 BMW 318i. So the E30, it's got the correct number of doors, it's got two doors. I just think these are money in the bank, I really do. It's a lovely car, four cylinder engine, very easy and nice to drive. What can I tell you about it? Three former keepers, it's got the desirable sunroof, it's got five matching Hankook tires, and it's just had cam belt service, all of the things you'd want, this car has had. So that's a nice one to bid on. Let me tell you what the reserve is. Unfortunately, it doesn't show on my phone. So estimated at nine to 11, I think that's gonna make that, you know, I think that's such a nice car. And can we all bow down because this is a little bit special. This is a 1999 Honda Civic Type R, the EK9. Now these are the stuff of fabled legend and with good reason. We had an EK, we had a Civic in this country. It wasn't the same, they were the same basic shape. That's pretty much where the similarity ends. These are much quicker, they rev much higher, they're much better spec'd. These are a phenomenally quick car. I raced one of these for two seasons. They are a giant killer. Also, incredibly good news. If you think of what other cars are doing, things like Evolutions, Impressors, the price of those, these haven't quite caught up yet. This one is estimated 12 to 14. I think it will probably make all of that. I wouldn't even be surprised if this car went back to Japan. These cars are just such good news. Championship white, the only color you want. What a way to travel. Now this car, I am very, very excited about. This is probably once in the lifetime chance to buy. So it's a Mazda 323 GTX Turbo 4x4, 1987. They never come up for sale anyway, and if they do, they're normally in bits. This is very good on the body, and as you can see, it's been competition prepared. So, pros and cons. You can hear everyone laughing in the background here because we're having such a good time. It's got this amazing box arch kit on. So that's all fiberglass. Never really seen one of those for sale before. That alone makes me want to buy it because it's like the love child of a Nova SRI and a Delta Integrale. It's got a bolt-on bonnet, which I would put pins in for that. It's got a fully stripped out interior, so you've got roll cage, you've got sports seats, you've got harnesses. This car has been prepared for competition, but pff, it's just too cool. It's estimated at four and a half, five and a half grand. Not a huge amount. You can either put it back to a road car spec and it would be an utter weapon, or I would just compete with it. Way cooler than an Impreza, says the Impreza owner. Way cooler than a Tommy Mac. And five and a half grand? I just think that's in 
an incredible bargain. And I guarantee you turn up at a car show, no one will have one, and in the unlikely event there's another one there, it won't have the arch kit on. Right, Let's see what else we've got. Right, Toyota Celica. We love these. This has done 106,000 miles, 1993. It's been with a current owner for 20 years. And it's just lovely, it's just exceptional condition. The paintwork is great, the history is great. The interior does not look the miles. The interior looks like 20,000 miles. I like these. It's a more cooking spec, it's the lower spec of Celica, but what a lovely way to travel. It's a Toyota. It will be here long after we've all gone. And then over here, probably my favorite car in this room, 1990 BMW 320 convertible, automatic with only 75,000 miles on it. And pretty minty, I have to say. I can't think of a nicer way to travel for summer than this car. I think this is a great one for you to just tool around in. Again, money in the bank, probably one of the best colors they did for that year. Really suits the car. Hood's in lovely condition. Car drives like brand new. One to own, one to be done. Have that one for the summer. Now, how about this? This is really nice. This is a car that's actually been through twice. This was sold needing work. It's now come back having had a lot of work very well professionally done. This is a 1981 Celica ST. And it was a nice car to start with, but it's since had a full body restoration. Comprehensive history file. The thing you can't say about many of these, this is a totally rock-free car. It was a really level car to start with. It's gone through, had full body work. 1600 engine, it's had a full overhaul. It is just ready to love, enjoy. It's heritage fleet quality, this one. If you're watching my friend Graham from Toyota, this needs to be on the heritage fleet. It's that nice. And what a lovely thing, great shape. If you think of the generation that goes before these, like the Mustang, Salikas, as they're called. They are fetching enormous money. This one is estimated at, let me tell you, eight to 10. That just seems like an enormous amount of car. You couldn't build this car for eight to 10,000 pounds, even if you had the car to start with. So I think this represents a great way to get a really nice Salika that doesn't need anything other than polish, petrol, and a bit of love. All right, next room. Now this car intrigues me greatly. This is a 1970 Porsche 911T, Californian import car. So of course you get the advantage of the fact the car is almost perfect bodily. It's rust free, nothing to do there. It's had a wrap. You might like it, you might not. I personally think it's rather cool. But if you want a pre-impact car, you're normally spending enormous amounts of money to get this. This is what everybody wants now. This is what Singer is doing, taking later cars like the 964 and backdating them to look like this. But this is the real deal. It's on Fouche. It's got everything you want. As I say, bodywork is exceptional. And this car is going to go through, I think maybe, I don't know, 40K, you could own that car. And I can't think of a nicer way to get a rust-free pre-impact car on your drive than that. Right, the 80s were a peak time. If you were a yuppie, if you'd done well, stock brokering in the 1980s, you went out and bought yourself a Porsche. And probably one of you bought this. This is a 1982 SC Targa. Very nice, normally aspirated car in guards red, which of course in the 1980s was the only colour to have. And what a thing, I can tell you about this. It's done 80,000 miles. It's got a recent body resto. The money that's been spent on this car, they spent 17,400 quid doing the body work. And if you look at, at the estimate, the estimate of the car is 30 to 35 grand. So more than half the value of this car has just been spent getting the bodywork to pristine condition. Best colour, it's got the 16 inch forged fuchsia as well, which is really, really cool. It's got the whale tail, which was an option on the Targa. And I just think that's a really nice way to travel. That's a very cool car. This next generation, the 964, you've almost got the family lineage here, I think is a high spot for 911s because you've got all of the great stuff of the G-Series, you've got the smoother bumpers, you've got all the refinements that came with that car. This is a 1990 cab, Carrera 2, so it's a desirable two-wheel drive, 38 stamps in the book, and it's a manual. So to reiterate, Carrera 2 manual, that's the spec that everybody wants. It's a higher mileage car, but you would not know. And there's the advantage of that, it makes the car much cheaper to buy. This car, we've all driven it, drives like brand new. It really does. So much money has been spent maintaining this car. And if you look, four previous owners, a UK supplied, on brand new Bridgestones, just had the roof service, 38 stamps over two service books, all the invoices and MOTs. If you want to get a Porsche convertible that you can use and enjoy, the car is as new, but has done 180,000 miles. So it's the best of both worlds because the estimate on this car, my friends, 35 to 40K. It will never be worth less than that. And you can enjoy it. Unlike the low mileage cars, which you'll never drive, that car, use it every day in the summer. 
Now, 944S2, one of the coolest Porsches because they are nice. You've got the transaxle, you've got the balance, you've got 50-50 weight distribution. This, to many track purists or fast road purists, is the sweet spot for affordable Porsches. This one's particularly nice, 135,000, a manual. It's got the pop-up roof. It's got the cream leather interior, which is really, really nice on this. Stainless steel exhaust. It's got P6000 tires on as well. Just had the cam belt, alternator done. Someone's just spent three grand servicing this car, and the estimate on that, eight to 10 grand. This is what I mean, there's so many cars in this sale where they've had impeccable either restoration or servicing histories, but they're coming into the sale where you're almost getting that for free. So there's a car there with 17 grand body resto. There's a car here in beautiful order with three grand's worth of work. You're not really paying for that. You're sort of getting that thrown in. That would be one I would love to bid on. Has to be a future classic. These cannot be as cheap as they've been for much longer because the 911s are so expensive, it will pull these prices up. I think if you put 10 grand into that, you'd have done very, very well, and that's something to treasure, and such a beautiful colour as well. Right, 928, I love them. S4, cool car, again, lovely spec on this, 123,000 miles. It's an auto, but then again, a lot of 928s are, because it's a bit more of a GT, a bit more of a cruiser. It's got cruise control as well. Alloy cut wheels with Michelin Pilot Sports on. Original toolkit on there. Marine blue, which I think is a great colour. Sunroof car again, just had two grand spent on the car in 2022, so this year over 10 grand spent on regular upkeep. So again, when you buy these Porsches, the key is regular history, lots of upkeep, lots of maintenance. All of these cars have exemplary history. So if you're looking to buy a Porsche in the sale, one of those has got to be the thing. Right, onward and upward, Series Land Rover, Series 1, this 1953. And I think if you were to exemplify the word patina, this is it. This is, if my friend Drew Pritchard was here, he would be having excitement, I think is the polite word at the moment. He would love this. Not only is it a particularly nice example, but the way that it's weathered is so beautiful. So 53, it's only done 34,000 miles this car. First ownership for 50 years, and it's all original specs. Manual, obviously. It's got its original registration. We think the mileage on this car is genuine because of the condition of it. It just looks like a 34,000 mile vehicle. It's had loads of nice upgrades, it's got an upgraded radiator, undrilled front wings, it's got the correct toolkit, and it's got parts catalogue and workshop manual. And I would say that's, if not the original Tilt and Bows, it's a very early one. That just hangs together. You could turn up anywhere in that, it just screams old money. I particularly love this, so that's a great one. Then moving over to this, you want to go a little bit later, a little bit more usable. Very, very cool, fully restored, 1991. Land Rover Defender 90. What can I tell you about this? It's been used, it's been loved, 231,000 miles, had an extensive restoration in 2021. It's got the later 300 TDI gearbox and engine, which makes it much more usable, much nicer to live with. Just a ton of money spent. The body is spot on. You cannot fault this. This looks like it's rolled out of a showroom. Everyone knows about Defender prices. There's so many converters doing upgrades on these now. The prices are going stratospheric. You could buy this fully restored, estimated at 16 to 20 grand. I think in this olive drab, a little bit of cool. I just think that's a lovely thing to own. Very usable 4x4. And you think of what happening with 4x4 prices now. Would you rather have, this at, say, 20 grand than a new Defender? I think go legit, get the original. Right, moving on. There's been a huge amount of interest in this. 1961 Mercedes SL. One of 562 cars made in right-hand drive. And this one... We think it has done 41,000 miles from new. Everything points to that being genuine on this car. It's had a full engine rebuild at the cost of 15 grand. It's been upgraded to twin Webers. It's got recent geometry. It's had a completely rare wind-up dashboard clock, the Kinzel clock. It's just a dream spec. If you want one of these, they don't really come up for sale. You maybe see one or two a year. Right-hand drives, one a year. Flawless bodywork, flawless interior is everything you want. So if you want one, come and bid on that. I don't think you'll find a nicer one, and I don't think you'll find one in a better colour. That's an interesting car, that one. It really is. Sticking with our friends in Stuttgart. My favourite shape, Pagoda SL. 1970, this one. It's done 25,000 miles. The restoration on this car has to be seen to be believed. It is almost flawless. This, the, you're getting up towards top-level concourse here. You really wouldn't need to spend much time on this to make this a concourse entrant. It has got Pagoda Hardtop, of course. We've just stored that safely away. Oh, happy dog. See, everyone's happy here, even the animals. Gearbox and torque converter have been rebuilt. It's been in the same family since 2007. It's just been serviced in November 2021. And there is a full photographic record of the rebuild here as well. So there's an awful lot of stuff. And again, I think the colour of this, the colour with the beautiful slate grey, 
the red interior. I think if you want a pagoda, this is the one you want to go for. And let's have a look at the estimate on this. The estimate will be 70 to 80, which I think is very, very fair. I've seen these cars go well into six figures in worse condition than this. I think, again, if you want one, you might want this one. Have a look. There's so many pictures online. There's a full video of this car. Please come and have a look. Right, onwards we go. 1934 Rolls-Royce. We do like our pre-war stuff here at Manor Park. This is a 1934 Rolls-Royce 2025 Park Ward deep back saloon. It's fitted with a replacement aluminium cylinder head and driving very well. Don't forget, if the car is drivable here, if it's a car that can go on the road, we drive every single car, and Roger in particular loves his pre-war stuff. So he has checked this out, so it drives beautifully. So it's had an aluminium cylinder head, which now costs £7,800 if you wanted to do that. So again, money you don't have to spend. It's got matching new tyres on, it's got a Brooks trunk on the back, it's got an aftermarket heater so you can use it when it gets a bit cold. It's got picnic tables, it's got companion mirrors, it's got the opening safari screen. I just think that's a particularly lovely thing. And that's going to be 18 to 22 grand. I just can't think of anything you could pull up in. Imagine going to the races or just a great day out or pulling up outside your favourite restaurant. You spent £22,000 plus your commission on that. So you may be in it for 23, 24 grand and you've just pulled up in that. It looks like you've won the lottery, doesn't it? And talking of which, look at this. This is super, super rare. This is a 57 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud James Young Touring Limousine. I defy you for the amount of money that this car will cost, which would be round about 30, 35 grand, I'd have said. I defy you to travel in more style and more opulence and with more presence than this car. This car is huge by today's standards. It's got air conditioning, which is unusual. That wasn't standard. Thought to be one of 16 cars built in this body style. And the James Young cars are really nice. You get these very distinctive handles, which are gorgeous. If you imagine where the coach line comes down, Elliot's going to zoom in for you now. And they zoom into this gorgeous gooseneck handle and square button. Supplied from the factory with the upgraded headlights, the high frequency horns, the export number plate. It's got fully operational electric division in the middle as well. So you can not talk to your chauffeur if you've had a row. One of you can sit in the back and you can put the division up. It's got a full history file, the correct turbo speed tires. And yeah, just, Utterly, utterly lovely. That will be, like I say, 35 grand. And I cannot think of a way I'd rather travel for that kind of money. This is cool, a little bit more price rangey. This one, 1971 Bentley T1. Of course, everyone knows the Silver Shadow, the nice car. Bentley T1 is the one because it's rarer. That means that, that you look a little bit more exclusive. This one is a great car. It's only done 38,000 miles. Just been MOT'd as well. Got one former keeper. Current ownership since 1995, original specification, including its original Radio 2. It's got companion mirrors in the back, correct save on tyres again. Just very cool, an incredibly lovely colour combination. And I think the fact it's a Bentley rather than a roller just makes it that little bit more exclusive. That's not going to be a hugely expensive car. That's going to be 10 to 15 grand. Awesome. Now, Bentley Continental GTC. Again, much more usable. Great car, these. This has only done 29,000 miles. It's a Mulliner, so it's got the lovely crossed leather and the nicer dash as well. Presented in outstanding condition, great MOT history, really nice colourway. And just ready for a bit of posing. It's not going to be dear. That one is estimated at 28 to 32, which, again, if you look what the current car is, and they haven't changed their style dramatically, I think that is a lovely way. The leather is immense. Just really, really lovely. Just a great car. And we're going to move on now to one of my favourites in the auction. Everyone knows I like an air-cooled Volkswagen. 1967 Volkswagen Carmen Gear. When we were here at the last auction, my friend Drew Pritchard came. He actually bought a Carmen Gear. This one is as nice, a little bit later. And this is a restoration car rather than a patina car. What can I tell you about this other than the fact it looks cool? The only thing I would change on this entire car, I think I'd take the white walls off, and then this car would be mega. Bodywork's had a fortune spent. Interior's had a fortune spent. It's on a rust-free left-hand drive car anyway originally a Californian car, it's had electronic ignition upgrade, it's got a Bluetooth radio, the chrome is banging on it as well, it's got four matching Toyos and it's been upgraded to a new rebuilt 1500cc engine. That car is going to be, we think, between 18 and 22 grand and they'll never go out of style. It's the nicer early bumper car as well, which I think looks a bit prettier on a Carmen gear. It's got the tower rails, which is the Californian spec, really, really nice. You can just drive it as it is, Spend a bit of time making it your own, but you could turn up at any classic car show or Volkswagen show in that, and I think you would fit right in. So moving on, moving on to one of the stars of the show, the 1931 Lagonda. You've seen this maybe in the classic car press. There's been a lot of noise about this. Everybody wants a genuine barn find, and Lagondas don't come up for sale very often. We exhibited pictures of this car when we got it out of the 
barn it was in with the leaves and the dust and all of that was authentic. This has not been touched. And I think the most wonderful thing that could happen to this car is that somebody just recommissions it, leaves it exactly like it is because it's just a time warp thing. It's a capsule of a moment where somebody tucked it away and it's just super solid. What can I tell you? It's done 6,350 miles. It's been in the current ownership for 43 years and it's been in storage for 35 years. That's 35 years worth of dust. You get a very similar look when Roger opens his wallet. Very similar patina. It's got its original registration number, it's got the supply and dealer plate, it's got the Lucas headlamps upgrade, it's got the full hood and frame and tonneau, it's got the original buff log book, and it's got the Andre Hartford adjustable shock absorbers. This, I think we're getting a lot of excitement about this. If you want a Lagonda, they don't come up very often. This one's exceptional, and the fact it's, it's in unrestored condition, it's just as it was, just too cool for school. Probably 90 to 110 grand that one, maybe even more, who knows? If you know, you know, and, and L, come and look. This is not set dressing, this is the original stuff. This is as we found it. We're throwing these in, the leaves come as part of the deal. Genuine barn find, genuine unrestored Lagonda. That is, you know, we say once in a lifetime buys, there's a couple in this sale, that's one of them. You will never buy that car again. If you want one, you don't buy that one. You're a fool. Anyway, Panther Callista. What can I tell you about Panther? Everybody knows Panther if you're a sad, geeky nerd like me, because I've actually got one of these. These are an interesting car. People often think they're a kit car, they're not, because that is hand-finished aluminium coachwork, not fiberglass. So there's a car before this called the Lima. The Lima was based on Vauxhall mechanicals. These are the Callista, aluminium body, very slightly larger, based on Ford mechanicals. So you've got basically bits of Cortina, bits of Granada. It's very easy to maintain and look after. 2.8 Cologne engine in this one as well and just super cool because nobody knows what they are. They looked kind of cheesy for a bit, and now they seem to be coming into their own. This is a very nice example. So this is a 1985 model, so it's got the injection 2.8 on this. It's only done 55,000 miles. It's got the leather interior, which is great. And it's just a really usable car. Everyone kind of at the time thought these were like a Morgan equivalent. And it's quite interesting because it's got the aero wings, so it's got the deeper section wings here. These covers weren't standard. It's got the optional front spoiler as well. So someone's opting this car in a very unique way. And I just think it's very cool. And they drive really well if you want a usable sports car that has that kind of pastiche look of an older English retro roadster, but you can kind of use it every day in the summer. The Caliss is it, because it's just a Ford underneath. Just a really easy car to live with. Huge amount of fun to drive. Dynamically all over the place. Skids at like 50 mile an hour, because obviously there's the back axle. There's your bum. Just huge amounts of fun. Right, on we go. One of the coolest cars. Everyone knows the story of the Sunbeam Tiger, of course. You take your little Sunbeam Roadster, you whack it full of V8 engine, and that gives you oof, one of the truly great sports cars. This is like a thinking man's Cobra, isn't it really? With a little bit more room to put your stuff in. This is a 66 car, subject of a full bare metal restoration, I think in one of the nicest colors as well. It's done 51,000 miles. We've got MOTs going back to 83. We've got original R. Do that again, sorry, mate. So this is a nice car because it's got MOTs going back all the way to 83. It's an original right-hand drive car. All the wings, balance, rear quarters have all been replaced. It's got the correct radio, correct tools. It's got the optional reversing lights, which is very cool. It's actually featured in the Tiger 50th anniversary book. If you don't know what these cars are, basically, tiny roadster, stuff full of V8, absolutely awesome. Huge amounts of fun that make the best noise in the world and just exceptionally cool. Talking of which, 1973, the best year, all the best things were made in 73, including me and including this Alfa Romeo 2000 Spider Veloci, and again, had an enormous amount of money spent. It's only done 65,000 miles. In 2021, this car had an eye-watering restoration, which means you get to pick up the result of somebody else's money and somebody else's hard work. What else can I tell you? It's got a full interior upgrade. It's got a new mohair roof. It's been converted to European specification, left-hand drive, so you can go touring in it as well. Brand new set of Pirelli P6s, all the handbooks and service books. That car is estimated at 18 to 22,000 pounds. I restored one of these on the show recently. You can't build them for that. You really can't. You couldn't get a nice car, put the paint on it, trim it for that kind of money. That to me is an exceptional way. And again, only going one way, only good news. And the left-hand drive, don't be put off by that because all the best cars are because they're import and therefore us free. And when you come to sell them, I sold the one I did to France. So left-hand drive cars will always sell better into Europe because they're all left-hand drive countries. Right over here, let's keep going. I can't stress enough what an investment opportunity this one is. So Mark 1 Mazda MX-5, 
Everybody wants one. If you read any Evo magazine, Top Gear magazine, what are the top 10 best handling cars of all time? This is always there as a reference. Of course, when Mazda built the Mark 1 MX-5, they used the Lotus Elan as their benchmark, and then by doing so, became the future benchmark for all automotive engineers for the perfect driving platform. Everything you need, little normally aspirated twin cam engine, we all know the story. What we don't know is that this car has done 6,000 miles. That is all. So if you are looking for a Mark 1 MX-5 to treasure, to keep, to have in your collection as an investment car and just drive sparingly and occasionally, this is it. This will be the one that will always get used for price guides, buying guides by all the magazines. This will be the one that gets pride of place at any Mazda MX-5 Owners Club Concours event. This car is exceptional. What can I say apart from 6,000 miles? Original right-hand drive UK car, three former keepers, just totally original. Everything you see is as it left the factory. Everything you see is as it sat on the showroom floor. What will it go for? Who knows? We're estimating this car at 12 to 14 grand. Could go for more. Who knows? But if you want one of these, do you think a new one's 30 yard, 40 yard? 12 to 14, it is like a new car. And dare I say, we'll go up rather than down. Let's keep walking around. What else have we got? We've got a lovely Triumph Gloria. Right, Triumph Gloria, again, another pre-war gem. We do love our pre-war stuff here. Because pre-war cars, they just, to me, represent something of a bargain. I think as I'm getting older now, 50 next year, I think there's a style and a grace, and these cars aren't fetching massive amounts of money for what they are. If you think of the exclusivity of this, you'll never turn up at a show and see another one. They just represent, to me, a time and a place in history and in style that's just a little bit more refined. This is a 34 car, 12.9 horsepower, only seven produced in this spec, so you will not see another one at a show. It has, as you can see, total professional restoration. It's got a low current starter motor and all filter conversion, so it's been modernized in all the right ways. Full weather gear, because it's raining today, of course, as well. Inboard jacks it's got. It's got the original engine, all the manuals, the original buff logbook, and that, my friends, we're estimating at 40 to 45,000 pounds. And I just think, if you look at the quality of it, and now come in and have a look, look at the leather, look at the dash. Say you spent 45 grand on that, I cannot think of anything that is as beautiful. I mean, imagine turning up at Goodwood or a car show in that. I just think that's incredible. And actually, for an older car, for a 30s car, loads of room, just so much room in there. Loads of leg room for big lads, and you can get kids or friends in the back. So I think that's particularly special, that one.